evening. Good evening. Getting a few nods, a few eyes turn. All right, good evening. It's good to be here tonight. We only get to sing one song tonight, so you better give it your best. One song tonight, number 391. Number 391. Let's stand together. Since we are only singing this one tonight, we'll stand right off at the bat. Sing it out unto the Lord. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's sight. Number 391. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are Tim, would you open us up in prayer tonight, and then we'll greet each other tonight after that. Father, yeah, well, we come before this, this evening, Lord, just thanks for allowing us to gather back, Lord, to hear your word preached. God, just ask you to uh, bless this service. God, just ask yeah. you to lead us and guide us, Lord, help us to do your will Amen. and to live for you, God. Just yeah. help us as we go out uh, this week, Lord, and help us to be a witness for you and uh, just to show others, uh, show Christ to others, Lord. I just ask you to be with the services and just help us to have a, a good evening. Ask us in your name. Amen. Amen. Greet each other tonight.
right, let's uh, gather in tonight. We got a lot going on. Uh, Brother Jeremy is coming, getting ready to preach right now first. And uh, Jeremy, I don't know where you went to, but somewhere around here. Uh, there, yeah, it's hard to miss somebody big as Jeremy. But uh, we're going to do Jeremy like I do the guys on Wednesday night. We're going to give him till 730. So everybody blow your horn at 730, you know. And then after that, we have a video that Josiah shared with me of David Gibbs uh, on, the, on the national anthem. And then Van is going to present the camp work uh, after that. And, but before we do any of that, we have a testimony from Don Zinn about the raven and the dove this afternoon at, after church. Don, would you stand and give your glorious testimony, please? It's all about Jason and what they're going through, so it won't even be about me. Oh, okay. Yeah. But something about your kids told you the raven was flying this afternoon? <laughs> Did the raven get loose after yeah. church? Yeah. The raven got loose. I just hope he'd give a testimony, but he's not giving a testimony. Raven or the dove, Do what? They said, what, what is that? The raven or the dove? Oh. <laughs> so when your kids look up at the supper table and go, is that the raven or the dove, daddy? <laughs> That's a pretty good deal. Well, I can tell you about my house. Most of the time it's the old raven. But anyway, we're working on it. Amen. Pray for Brother Jeremy as he comes to preach tonight. Jeremy, could you come? And uh, then we'll have that. Have you guys found that seed at uh, that deal? You found it? Okay. And uh, Josiah, thanks for sending it to me. That's a, that's a we'll see. Dave, many things from David Gibbs is good. Amen. God bless you, Jeremy. Thank you. Getting real close. <laughs> We're already circling. <laughs> so, uh, if you'll turn your Bibles with me this evening to Psalms chapter 104. <clears throat> I will try to preach quickly this evening. But uh, Don said if I didn't do a good job, I wouldn't get no amens out of him. So I can't be too quick. I got to get a little bit of little bit of good stuff in there. Psalms chapter 104. <clears throat> I want to start reading uh, chapter in verse number one of chapter Psalms 104. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my Lord God, O, o Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain? Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the water? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire? Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains... At thy rebuke they fled, at the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys under the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field, the wild asses quench their thirst. By them they shall, by them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chamber. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, and herb for the service of man, and that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that make glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds make their nest, as for the stork, <clears throat> the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rock for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons, and the sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness as is night. Wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun riseth, they gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth into his work and to his labor until the evening. 
O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is the great and wide sea, wherein things creeping innumerable, both small and great beast. There go the ships, there is that le le <coughs> le I can say that earlier, now I can't say it. Leviathan, who thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That they givest them the, thy gather, thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, they return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have, before, have my being. My meditation to him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. Let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. Let's pray this evening. Lord, just ask God that you'll be with us this evening as we look into your word, Lord, that we uh, bring the message tonight. God, I pray that you'll prepare our hearts for what you have for us, Lord. God, I pray that you'll help me to preach quickly and clearly, Lord. And Lord, that you'll help me to preach with understanding. God, I just thank you for what you do for us and your love for us and all your goodness, Lord, your mighty and your power. Lord, I want to give you all the blessings and the glory for anything that I can do or say, Lord, is, is all of you, Lord, because I'm nothing and I can't do nothing without you. And I need you tonight, God. I pray that you'll be with us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Now, I know that was a little bit of reading, <clears throat> but I wanted, to, I wanted to read that whole chapter tonight. That, that, that whole chapter of Psalms is, is blessing to God. And it's talking about how mighty God is and the things that God created us and, and all these things that God has done for us. And it's beautiful the way that God has, has laid out things for us to enjoy in the, in the earth and, and the, the, the cattle, the, the, the feed and the, the rain and all the things that God gives us and the plants and the trees and just everything that he does for us. He's a mighty, powerful, wonderful God. You know, right now in the... Missouri, it's hay season. A lot of you knows that because I know a lot of you have been out in the hay, on the tractor. You've been out there getting in it. And we've been in the hay. We've been in the hay season. And uh, I remember back uh, years ago, I can remember Grandpa always telling me that here it is. It's, it's the first part of July now. And he said, uh, you know, they always had around, around home there would have a 4th of July celebration. And the community would all get together and they'd have a big, uh, a big celebration. He said the best thing you ever seen, they had these big old wash tubs. They would be full of ice and they'd have cold Coca-Colas down in them. And you just go over and get you one. And he said that was a pretty big deal when he was a kid. But he said I couldn't even hardly enjoy it because I knew tomorrow Grapple LT was going to say that we're going to go do hay. Because that's what it was as hay season started the day after the 4th of July around the old Hopper farm. Now we got into it a little bit sooner, praise the Lord, before it got quite so hot. And that was a good thing. But right now it's hay season. There's lots of different seasons in our lives. And the seasons that we all get to see, you know, is springtime. We get to see summertime. And then the fall when the leaves change. And then the winter comes. And there's seasons that come in the earth in, the, in our lives. All different kinds of seasons. There's seasons in our, in our lives physically. Each and every one of us have seasons in our lives. You know, you start out as a young person. Everybody I know has to start out as a baby. Nobody comes and just pops up and they're six foot, okay? They don't get to be, start out to be a daddy or a mommy. Everybody's got to start out as, as, as the same plane, okay? And then you got to grow a little bit. And there's a season, there's a season where you're a child and then you're a teenager and then you get to be a young adult. There's different seasons in your life. There's the season where you maybe you're going through a, a time where, where you begin to uh, uh, raise a family, you get married and 
and you start to have a family and you have children in these seasons in your life and maybe your family, it's your children get grown and next thing you know, you've got grandkids and we've got grandkids running around now. Got two of them on the ground. Wild little fellers. They're dandies. We like them. <laughs> and uh, it's a good time. It's a good season. And there's all these different seasons in our lives. Oh, one thing I know about Don is sometimes my, my boy Benjamin, he likes hunting season. Amen? Uh -oh. Amen, Don? Yeah. Hunting season, deer season. I want to hear an amen out of you. Yeah. Okay, I got my amen out of Don, so now we can start winding it up. <laughs> sometimes we get, Benjamin likes to go deer hunting. And that deer season is a big thing for Benjamin. Benjamin likes turkey season. He likes all those hunting and trapping seasons are big. It's a big time. Like I said, now then on the farm, it's, it's haying season and fescue season. Sometimes we have a calving season. And sometimes there's a planting season. It's time to put seeds in the ground. And we got all these different seasons in our lives. But the season that I want to talk about tonight... <clears throat> We found in uh, Psalms chapter 104, in verse number 27, and it's the due season. The due season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse number 1 says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. In Psalms 104, we already read it. It says, These wait all upon that thou mightest give them their meat in due season. Everybody has to wait on the Lord. Right. There's seasons in our lives that we have to wait on God. We've got to wait on God to bring us what we need. You know, it's pretty dry out there right now. Out here in old Douglas County, the grass is turning brown and crunchy. And it's time that we're needing some rain. It's a hot season. And it's, it's a time whenever, we, you know, there's a lot of times when we send out and we're going across our pastures and different things like this. Saying, Boy, Lord, I wish you'd send us some rain. God, I'm praying for you to send us some rain. And you know what God says? I'm going to send you what you need in the due season. Now we get to asking for it. We get to praying for it. We wanting it bad. And God knows when it's time to give it to us. And he'll send us the rain. That's another verse in Leviticus chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. It says, if you walk in my statues and you keep my commandments and do them, then will I give you rain in the due season. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse number 14, that I will give you the rain out of your land in his due season. In Psalms 145, verse number 15, the eyes of all that wait upon thee, and thou givest them meat, their meat in the due, in due season. I want to ask us tonight, what is the time or the season that you're in in your life? Now you might think about, well, you know, where am I at in my age or in my, in my relationship with my family or my home or, or where am I at physically? I want us to think about where are you at spiritually, what time in your life, where are you in your season with God tonight? Are you going through a, through a dry time? Are you going through a summertime? You're having some heat and you're, having some, you're asking God, why is these things happening to me? Where are you at, God? Sometimes we get to going through winter time in our spiritual walk with the Lord. Seems like it gets a little cold and dark. And we wonder, where's God at? And why don't you send us some warmth? Why don't you send us some rain? Why don't you send me the meat that I need? Where's these things at, God? God says you'll get it in your due season. <clears throat> As we wait upon the Lord to send the rain and the drought, sometimes we become very weary. Because we say, Lord, it's a due season. We're due for some rain. We're due for some good things in our lives. I'm due for a little help from God. I need you, Lord. I feel like it's time. And I'm beginning to get weary. I'm starting to ache. I'm starting to hurt. I'm starting to wonder, what's this all about? What are you trying to do in my life? And we ask God to help us. We think that our season should be now. God knows the right time. Isaiah chapter 40 
And verse number 31 says, But those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You know, Jesus told his disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse number 7, It's not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. We don't understand sometimes what God's trying to do in our lives. And Jesus says, you know what? You don't always have to have all the answers. You know, I told my kids growing up, and I've told people that work for me sometimes, you don't have to know everything there is to know. You just have to wait on the Lord. You just have to let God lead you and direct your paths. You don't have to see what the light is. You know, in Sunday school class, we talked here a while back about walking by faith and not by sight. I had the young people line up and we put a blindfold on them and I set out a bunch of chairs all over the, the room there. And I said, all right, now see if you can make your way to the door. Well, they was bumping into chairs. Well, they was walking slow and careful now trying to reach and find them. But those things were in the way. And the Bible says that we walk by faith, not by sight. And I said, you know, after two or three of them went through this little scenario, I said, okay, now let me give you a little bit of help. And I took one of them by the hand with the blindfold on and I just led them right straight to the door. Didn't bump into a single thing. Everything went smooth. At one point, I let go of them before we got there and they stopped. And they said, what happened? Amen. You know what? You let go of me. I don't know where I'm blinded here. I can't see where I need to go. I said, what's the matter? Where'd you go? I can't see you. I said, just keep walking forward. You're doing fine. Turn a little to the left. All right, back to the right. You're doing fine. Just keep walking. You're doing good. Sometimes God lets go. We don't have a hold of him. We ain't got him right close to us and we don't know what we're doing. And the best thing that you can do is stop and say, Lord, I need some help. I need you to tell me. I need you to guide me. I need you to give me some direction in my life. And you know what? You may stand there for a little bit and you may have to wait on the Lord, but he'll give it to you in the due season. And he'll say, you know what, now it's time you can start walking. There may have been a reason that you had to stop right there. There may have been something that God had was pulling you out of that situation in your life. No matter what it is, I don't know what your situation is, but God knows what it is. And God is wanting to and willing to direct your life. And, to, and we walk by, if we would walk by faith and not by sight. But no, we sometimes, a lot of times, we think we need to see where we're going. We get to want to reach up there and peek a little bit. Say, God, I don't know. I want to listen to you. Put the blindfold on me, but where are we at right now? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I need to see just a little bit. Just give me a little glimpse. <clears throat> we need to wait upon the Lord until it's due season. We don't know what season that others are going through in their lives. Amen. Sometimes we run into some people that are having trouble. They're having some struggles. And it's pretty easy for me to say, straighten up, what's the matter with you? Trust the Lord and move on. Yeah, just let God take care of it. What's your problem? We don't know what kind of season people are going through in their lives. People get to struggling sometimes. Sometimes they just need to wait on the Lord. Sometimes they need a little bit of help and encouragement. Sometimes people need a little bit of love. And we don't know what they're going through, what kind of season it is, the due season for them. But I do know one thing. God has a plan for our lives. Amen. God has the best in mind for you. Amen. He has the best in store for you. God has a direction for you that would be so much better than anything that I could do for myself. Amen. If I would just listen to him, if I would let him direct me, if I would just wait for that new season. Amen. Matthew chapter 7 Verse number 11 says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? God has the best in store for us. 
In Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. God is willing. God has the ability. God, we read all through there in Psalms chapter 104, all these things that God controls. Earthly things and all these things. God has created this earth for heaven's sakes. He's the master of it all. He's the most powerful. He, there, there's nothing that He can't do. And we sit down here and we wonder, I don't know if God's going to be able to do this for me or not. Yeah, I just don't know if He can handle it. And God says, do you think my hand's shortened and I can't reach you? I created you. I created everything. I've got all the things that you need just sitting here waiting for you. But you're going to get it in the due season. <clears throat> right now, in one time or another, I told us we're all going through different seasons in our life. And God has something different for us, each one at different times in our lives. It is the due season. But what does it do to you? What have you got coming? What is this season in your life that you've got that God's fixing to deal to you? In Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2, right after the verse we just read about God's hand being shortened, it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. You know, it's not that God's not able to do what we think we want. Or God's not able to bless us. Or that God's just not blessing us. Sometimes it's because God's trying to get our attention. Amen. God's trying to talk to you. He knows that there's things in your life that without Him putting these trials and problems in your way, you're just going to keep right going down the same trail. Yep. Nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to be any different. And it's times like this that God says, hey, this is your due season. It's time that you're going to get what's due to you. You know what? God gives us all kinds of grace and mercy. And I praise the Lord for that. That He has never given me what exactly I have due to me. If He had, I'd be in hell burning tonight. And I praise the Lord for that. <coughs> but God sometimes says, you know what? I know what's best for you. And this is what's going to hurt. But you're going to get it. This is what's due you today. And God works in our lives that way sometimes. In Hosea chapter 14 and verse number 9. The Bible says, For the ways of the Lord are right. The ways of the Lord are right. You know, several years ago, we had some things come up in our family. Different things there's been in our family in my lifetime. Some health problems that some of us have had to deal with. Some troubles that we've had to deal with. You know, problems come up. Everybody, is anybody in here that's not had any trouble in your life? I want to see you. No? Anybody that's not even had no tr health problems or, or, or just problems with your family or your kid? Everybody goes through troubles. Sometimes, you know what, I get to thinking, my troubles are pretty bad. And then I find out about hearing something else and somebody got, you know, boy, I've got it good. The Lord's been good to me. And, uh, <clears throat> but we went through that and I said here a while back we had a problem. There was something several years ago that came up. I don't remember now what it was, some sickness or somebody. I, I don't remember. I think, you know, I, well, I do remember now. I do remember for sure what it was now. It was my dad, had, he had cancer. He had, he had to have some cancers cut off of him. And, uh, and they were saying, I don't know, you know, if he's going to get it. And it was sounded like it was a pretty serious deal. And thank God they got it all. And, and he's done good. And he hadn't had no trouble about it. But I said, you know what? Somebody asked me. They said, well, what are you going to do? Your dad's got this problem. And I said, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if dad's going to make it or not. I don't know if they're going to get it all or not. I don't know if they're going to have to go through uh, different kind of therapies. And mom ended up having some problems too. And I said, yeah, I don't know what's going on. But I can tell you one thing, whatever God does, it's going to be right. It's going to be right. I know it's going to be right. I may not like it. I may not agree with it. I may not be sitting here saying, you know what, Lord, I want you to heal them. I want you to make them feel better. I want you to give them back their health. But God may not do it. And we wonder why. 
But I'll tell you right now, tonight, whatever happens, whatever God does, it's going to be right. Amen. In Psalms chapter 104, the first verse that we read tonight, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O, my, o Lord my God, thou art very great. Amen. God is bringing us what we need for our due season. The time tonight that we've had <clears throat> to understand and to learn what God's word says for us in these different things. We need to apply these things to our life. It's not, it's not that God is out to get us or that God's not wanting to listen to us. But you know what? God has a plan for our lives if we just want to listen to him. We've got to have the faith that God has given us. It's not something that we can even muster up of our own selves. We ain't even got, the, the faith has to come from God. Amen. The faith to trust Him, the faith to believe Him. The faith to wait upon Him, the patience. You know, one of the things we said in our class, in our, in our, uh, our Sunday school class was, the, the, in Second Peter, it says that we need to add to our faith, Pastor, and we need to add virtue, and we need to add knowledge, and, and all these things. And one of the things that the Bible says that we need to add to our faith is patience. To wait upon the Lord. And I said, you know what? I don't like waiting on the Lord sometimes. I have a hard enough time just waiting for supper to get ready. Let alone having to wait upon God every now and then. Because sometimes God just says, you know what? You're going to have to wait. And I say, Lord, I feel like it's my due season. And he says, you're going to have to have patience and I'll give that to you too. If we just need to learn to wait on God in our due season. But sometimes we need to also figure out what do we got to do to us? And maybe God's trying to get our attention to change something in our life one way or another. Pastor, I'm done. <laughs>